Hello and welcome back to another video. We have May Scrawler Box just freshly through the letterbox. I'm really excited. I'm hoping we get some good supplies in this. I'm not going to waffle on. We are going to jump straight into this one and see what we have. Oh, nice little pattern. Let's take all that out. So we have the Scrawler Zine that we will flick through at the end. We have the featured artwork here. Very nice, very, a lot of thin layers. We could have some sort of marker here or watercolor, I'm not really sure. Very nice, I like this nice abstract pattern. And this is the featured artist, a visual artist and designer born in Rome. Since 2012, I have lived and worked in Amsterdam where I specialize in pattern design illustration. Wow, what an interesting job. I didn't think that would be a thing. There are some socials at the bottom here, which I will certainly be checking out as well. Very, very nice. Okay, so we have some mixed media paper. Let's see what we have in the parcel here. Okay. So, put that to one side. We have a bubbly Anglo, a little bubble gum, I believe. So I'll put up on the screen what my thoughts are of this and whether it has any sourness at all. We have the vinyl sticker, which is a little section of that featured artwork there. Also very nice. Okay, so let's start with these. We have some Ecoline Duo Tips. So this, it says here that they are a favourite amongst artists, designers and illustrators alike. The Ecoline Duo Tip Markers feature a bright yet transparent liquid watercolour ink made from dye and gum arabic. Very nice. So we have some lovely colours here. I think I see the likes of Monkey Mintaka use these for her plain air sketches. So I'm very excited to try them out. We have three colours here, lemon yellow primary, magenta and sky blue cyan. So a nice range of colours. And it looks like we have a chisel nib on one end and a bullet nib on the other. So very nice, very highlight-esque colours. And as you can see in that featured artwork, they look like they layer very nicely on top of each other, so very good. Next, we have a Copic Multiliner 1.0 in black. So a very, very thick, thick liner there. So that'll be good for outlining some of these patterns, maybe. Very interesting. I love a Copic Multiliner. I think they're such great pens. Really, I don't think they're overrated at all. They're really great. So I'm excited to try that. And next we have the Castell 9000 Black Lead Pencil 2B by Faber Castell. Nice standard two. I love a 2B pencil. It's probably my favourite pencil and my pencil of choice for any sort of sketching at all. So very, very nice. And then lastly, we have the Scrollbox A5 Mixed Media Pad, a versatile and slightly textured paper pad. Oh yeah, we do have a nice texture on that. Look at that. That'll be very nice to use with those pens. See how that that comes out. Okay, so let's have a quick look through the scroller zine before we get started. So we have the lovely laid out double page spread telling us a little bit more about those supplies. We have the scroller artist, a little bit more about those and a bit of a question and answer. The scroller tips, which as always, I will read whilst I do some swatching some behind the artwork and some more scroller tips there so quite extensive tips we have the scroller gallery which is featuring artwork from the feminine energy box which i believe what are we in now may uh matches box i believe so very nice artworks here i can't remember what the supplies were oh the copic markers we got the copic markers oh very nice i like these very different so that's um some of the featured artwork from us creators and then the top three wow wow look at these that is incredible oh i'm for sure gonna go and follow all of these look at this one at the bottom incredible detail in these beautiful well much deserved top three there god without a shadow of a doubt very very nice and then lastly we've got the scroller extra which is 
life in polka dots so i think that is why we had this <laughs> very polka dotty cover on the scroll zine so very very nice i think that is a very unique box and something a little bit different nice to try some water based markers for for a change since we've had some alcohol markers recently so i'm excited to try these let's get to swatching i'll read some of those scroller tips and then we'll see what we can create with the scroller challenge which is kaleidoscope so very broad there let's see what we can do with that Right, so a lot of these scroller tips are pretty samey than some of the ones we've received in previous boxes you know telling us to swatch mixing new colors blending and using water to change these markers as they're water based you can use them similar to how you would use um like a, a water pencil sort of thing so you can use wet and wet, wet techniques blending layering um laying flat layers of color and then having wet wet brush over it all that sorts of things um but the key things i think in these scroller tips that i think are actually quite interesting is the color theory aspect so we all know primary secondary and tertiary colors but in this it's telling us that it's not just about red yellow and blue so a, a few of us may know about uh, cmyk which is um a printable color way that we usually use when we're sending things to print and um, so if you're making products you will be aware of that and that consists of cyan magenta yellow and black now it shows some color charts here where the primary colors are the cyan magenta and yellow and when you mix those you can create secondary colors which are red blue and green so we've always been taught going, going through school that you can't make the colors red or blue from scratch well this kind of is a way you can do that using cmyk rather than RYB. So it's quite interesting. I thought that was something interesting to do. But in terms of the tips, like I say, they're quite standard. So when I was doing my swatching, I did my usual colour kind of chart where I mix each colour and I did that whilst they were wet which worked really really nicely with me and I was able to get a really good mix and different values of those colours which looked really great to me and I thought this is fantastic, a lovely range of colours. So then this brings me to my artwork. When I think of kaleidoscopic, I think of those little kaleidoscopes you used to have as a kid where you'd see the really weird and wonderful shapes within them with lovely colours, all kind of split into triangles and just so many different angles and shapes and things and so that's kind of what I was going off I used my iPad on procreate and I split my canvas into um, symmetrical shapes um, which would mimic in each shape and what I was drawing and then I created this little pattern I did a play with a few different patterns but they kind of turned out a bit more mandala rather than a kaleidoscope I wanted to create these really ragged lines and harsh shapes and triangles which I feel is more kaleidoscopic and um, so yes I did mim I did make that on my iPad and then I mimicked the colors and I blended them on my iPad I used a watercolor brush and turn down my transparency so that whenever I layered the colours they would layer much like the pens would which worked out really nice I really liked my mock-up and I thought it was really great so I printed it out and, and traced over it so that I could get these really nice sharp lines as you can see here um, and then I started to proceed to fill them in now what I hadn't thought of was the fact that in my swatching I was layering those pens as they were very very wet whereas because I'd mocked this up on my iPad I mocked each colour on the on a separate layer so I thought when I was doing it I would turn on the yellow layer fill in all the shapes that I wanted the yellow to fill in and then I would turn on the magenta fill in all the shapes the magenta etc etc and that's what I did but obviously each color had dry before I was able to add the next color and so although I was getting that transparent blending of deepening the colour or making the colour blend. I was I was achieving the red, blue and green kind of looks but I wasn't achieving the blending that I did in my swatching so that was my first mistake. My second one was because I was adding these on thick layers and I was needing to scribble almost like colouring in, <laughs> I was eating up the paper and it really was causing a bit of an issue. If I had added any more colours 
it just wouldn't have worked. I really wanted to try adding more areas where it was actually layering all three colours so that we got the real depth of colour and, and hue, but I was just really struggling with the paper being chewed up. So I think I think I hit the brief with kaleidoscopic. I think it looks very much like that. However, I think there are other ways to execute this and I wish I'd tried some other things. I definitely think maybe uh, scribbling these pens on a palette and kind of uh, um, kind of watering them down and adding them as layers of thin watercolour paint might have worked but again I don't know how the paper would have held up with that I don't know whether if you oversaturated the paper it would just chew it up similar to just using the pen um, but so do let me know in the comments if that's something you've done and, and it worked really well because I'd like to have a go. Um, but I, I kind of liked, I like the art, I think it's nice, it's just a lot darker, a lot less blended and a little bit like a child has, has coloured in a book <laughs> is kind of the vibes I'm getting for it. But the supplies are very nice, the pens are very nice, just not, I don't think I executed my idea how I wanted to but they're very nice like I say very very nice and then I use my Copic multi-liner here to line it which was very very satisfying as you can see you can kind of get all that symmetry coming together there are a few areas where I may have messed up and a few areas that didn't look as neat um but I, I think the end result was was good and kind of links to the kaleidoscope anyway so i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoy the art please let me know what you thought of the box i'd love to hear your thoughts so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye